In the middle of the San Francisco Bay lies an island warehouse where a team of inventors imagines the future and builds it. It's going to blow your mind. It's fast track prototyping. But are two weeks long enough to turn wild ideas into reality? Full speed ahead! On this episode of Prototype This, it's alive. inspired by nature, Disgusting. the guys attempt the future of all terrain vehicles. Ah! A six legged robot that can carry a human. But can the team actually get it up and running? Find out next on Prototype This. All-terrain vehicles of today have one age-old invention in common, the wheel. Wouldn't it be great if a vehicle could be built to cover ground like an animal in an attempt to create the future of all-terrain vehicles? So the guys take the mystery machine for a spin to explore the idea. The wheel is one of the greatest inventions in human history. But it's not perfect! And as conditions take a turn for the worst, so do Big Blue's tires. The wheel's only as good as the road you're driving on! And it's not long after heading off-road that the old-fashioned wheel's true limitations become obvious. Take a look at nature. There's a reason why animals and insects have legs instead of wheels. Legs work better to get around. Looks like we're hoofing it. We've got a great idea for a build. And after a long walk back to the island, our team hits the concept table to kickstart the idea. All right, guys, so we're going to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. That sounds hard. Why is everyone locked in the mindset that vehicles have to have wheels on it? Why don't we try to make this all-terrain vehicle that has legs instead of wheels? Isn't there a reason that there are wheeled vehicles? If it were so easy, wouldn't there be legged vehicles just walking all over the place? Yeah, it is a tremendously difficult control and balance problem. Um, in fact, a, a reliable legged vehicle is like the holy grail for the military. They've been looking for one for years. Well, we just happen to be strategically located between Berkeley and Stanford, two of the world's best research facilities for leg locomotion. All right, who's driving? We should Not walk. Me. Our prototypers have set out on a mission to reinvent the wheel by constructing a walking, all-terrain vehicle capable of carrying a human. And they'll be unveiling it in the safety of a wide open field after a two-week build. So, eager to get a leg up on an unfamiliar concept, Joe and Mike hit the halls of UC Berkeley to meet with an expert in the field of animal movement. We're looking to build an all-terrain legged robotic vehicle thing that a human can actually sit in. Uh-huh. And we know that you have a lot of experience, you know, looking at animals and insects and how they move. And I guess our first question is, how many legs should this vehicle have? The minimum number, I think, six would be good because that forms a really stable platform. So that the guys can get a look at a six-legged insect in motion, the doctor puts one of his live subjects onto a specially designed roach treadmill. Whoa. Dr. Full studies the motion of insects, like this South American death's head roach, to make machines that move in animal-like ways. Okay, good, let's... Joe's okay as long as the roach is doing laps behind glass, but when it's brought out for a breather, it's disgusting. he shows why he's an electrical engineer and not an entomologist. I'm not a big fan of cockroaches. I wasn't letting that thing get near me. But Joe's fears aside, the roach is the key to knowing how their robot could walk. So Dr. Full brings out a robot of his own that slows down the action so they can see the extremely efficient way six-legged insects get around. So animals like this toy use an alternating tripod where this leg, this leg, and this middle leg all work together as one, and they move out of synchrony with this leg, this leg, and this leg. Just like the racing roach. Turns out that this hexapod configuration of six legs and having three down on the ground at one time is the most stable. And it's also something that we can produce in a relatively simple manner. Hopefully it will work. Now that they know how many legs this robot will have to stand on, back on the island, the guys need to bone up on hexapod technology. Building a, a legged robot that can carry a person is very ambitious. So we need all the advantages we can get. Zaz hits his laptop for an extreme session of internet research where he soon discovers Rex, a small, rugged walking robot with amazing all-terrain capabilities. Rex is a really cool hexapod robot platform with one joint per leg. 
and it was developed in collaboration between two universities, the University of Michigan here in the States and McGill University up in Quebec in Canada. And after digging deeper, Sanz locates one of the original designers of the Rex. But Rex's mastermind isn't local. So the guys head off to Cisco to use their state-of-the-art telepresence system, where they meet a world expert in hexapod technology, Hal Kamsoglu. <laughs> Though it seems like they're sitting across a desk, Hal is all the way across the country. Well, what we really want to talk to you about is building a, a big Rex that a person can ride in. <laughs> now, that is exciting and scary simultaneously. <laughs> Hal, is it possible to take the brains of this small robot and use it in our larger scaled up version? That's quite possible. We believe it can be done. It appears that the control system, or brains of Hal's little robot, can be utilized in the scaled up version, saving the guys invaluable amounts of precious time. There's just one more all important question. Well, what we really want to ask you is, would you be available to come out and give us a hand with this? When do you need me? How does tomorrow <laughs> sound? <laughs> I, I cannot resist. <laughs> Barely 24 hours later, Hal and his robot arrive on the island. The Fantastic Four set up a challenging obstacle course of varied terrain to get a first-hand look at what Rex can do. Resident Daredevil Dr. Zaz will be manning the large-scale Rex, so a miniature Zaz is placed on the Rex to give the guys an idea of what to expect when they add a human component. Oh yeah, that's the love right there. As long as we don't kill the guy on sitting on top, we're good. <laughs> yeah, good. Exactly. All right, All right. let's try it. Shall At least start? the robot hound. All right. Let the games begin. With Rex off to an extremely fast start. Oh, oh, oh. You can That's do impressive. it, little robot. The team starts to see just what a six-legged robot can do. Oh, <laughs> as Rex conquers every obstacle in its path. Oh, oh look at it, just dirt. kick out dirt. That is awesome. <laughs> Just cruised over everything from the slippery astroturf over that rubble, the hay, no problem. It was really great. That's amazing! Yeah! Wow. That is One try! But as Rex takes a second spin on the course, the need to ensure that the driver is well protected becomes evident. Coming out here today and seeing this thing perform on our obstacle course, we're certain this is the way to go. Certain? After watching his likeness get squashed on its tiny head, Zaz might have something to say about that. Those rollovers that, you know, it's just kind of funny with the little Rex, that's not going to be funny when there's a person sitting in that thing. Coming up, Terry goes back to welding school. This is going to take a while. And later, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. This vehicle might not even stand up. Our team is attempting to build an all-terrain six-legged vehicle capable of navigating areas wheeled vehicles can't. Not an easy task. After finding an expert in hexapod technology, the guys got a quick look at what Hal's small-scale model can do and are now going to attempt to build the world's first legged vehicle capable of carrying a human. Their version of the six-legged robot will be configured like an SUV of today. It will have a chassis, batteries, drivetrains, and a driver's seat, with the major difference being legs, not wheels. With so much to do, wow. our prototypers need an organized plan. So it's back to the concept table to try to divide up this monumental build. I'll do the chassis and I'll make sure that that's all sussed out as far as loads and torsion points. Uh, Joe and I will look at the uh, powertrain and uh, the battery management. So I'm going to be dealing with the legs and the weight is really a huge concern for me. Are we going to need to have any safety mechanisms in here? So safety is going to be critical for this thing. I mean, these legs flipping around, they could take your head off. We are all going to have to monitor the safety of this very carefully. All right, let's get cracking. <laughs> and they're off and running. Terry's part of the build, the chassis, is quite a daunting responsibility, especially considering the two-week time frame. So he and Zaz head over to Spec Design for a meeting with senior mechanical engineer John Carver. So I laid out some basic components before you guys got here. This project is going to require a ton of CAD. 
That's computer-aided design. And that's modeling the structure, selecting out what material everything's going to be made out of, running analysis to make sure that all the struts and joints and so on are strong enough. Uh, big thing on this is going to be weight. Sure. We've got to get the weight to be absolutely as low as we can possibly get it. The target weight of the chassis is set at 400 pounds. And John thinks by using a light metal like aluminum, it might be possible to bring the weight down even lower. I might even be able to beat it by 50 pounds or so. Satisfied they're on the right track, Terry and Zaz head back to the island so John can get started with the CAD for the chassis. Being a leg man himself, Mike was the obvious choice for the leg design on this build. The six appendages are crucial because of the many different duties they'll be required to perform. Well, they look simple, but there's a lot that goes into these legs. For one, they have to be strong enough to hold the whole vehicle up so they can't break. And then they have to have some compliance. So I have to have a little spring in the step to make cushion the ride, but also spring the vehicle forward. And then on top of that, if they're too compliant, it'll flip over. So they have to be nice and stiff in that direction. It's up to Mike to select which material is going to give him the best chance for success. It looks like the one I'm gonna go with is carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is an advanced composite material, best known for its strength and low weight. An ideal choice for the construction of aircraft, satellites, and walking six-legged all-terrain vehicles. Besides being lightweight, the advantage of using carbon fiber is its strength and flexibility. It's really stiff in that direction, so it's really, I can't even bend this. But then I clamp down on the other sample. Now hold on, you see it's really flexible. Feeling the urgency to get the legs designed, fabricated, and on the vehicle for integration, Mike starts crunching some numbers. He computes that the best solution will be a three foot long leg that is one inch thick at the top, tapering down to just six tenths at the bottom. Our legs taper down smaller because you don't want that mass at the end of it because that's more to move. And so our robots can be exactly the same as in nature. And like any good scientist, Mike's got to test out his concept before moving on. So he mocks up a small test version of the leg and crams it in a vise to get an idea of how much pressure the little leg will withstand. That's a lot of force on this little leg. <laughs> ah, Mike's embarrassing high-pitched squeal. But with strength and flexibility like that, it's a squeal of approval. I think we're in business. All right. Meanwhile, up in the lair, Joe and Hal are on the way to another solution, this time for the control system. They're developing a cool way for the pilot of the vehicle to steer. So Joe's doing what he does best, hacking up electronics. Or in this case, an old school video game joystick, which he'll use as the controller. We really want this thing to feel like you're driving something. And when you're sitting in this big robot, it's sort of gonna feel like you're in a tank. This thing's gonna be moving around, the legs are gonna be spinning. So having you know a big arcade joystick like this moving around really is gonna feel substantial. And that's really what we want. After soldering the final pieces onto a circuit board, Joe's fired up and ready to go. Should we try to test it out? Yeah, let's do that. And Hal's little Rex is the perfect guinea bot for the trial run. So they head outside to give it a whirl. If Joe's joystick can steer the little Rex, the next step will be scaling the system up to the drivetrain of the full-size machine. All right, and that is button number three. Yeah. Good. I hope it goes forward. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> joystick control. Look at that. And just like that, Joe is now in control as he maneuvers the Rex across the parking lot. So we have our arcade joystick. We can push forward, backwards, left, right, control the robot. It's safety first on <laughs> prototype this. So Joe has installed a dead man switch, which will kill the power in case of emergency. Zaz is falling off. Better use the dead man switch. When he lets go of the switch, Rex stops dead in its tracks. <laughs> Stop. All right. Let's hope this is the last time the switch will be needed. With the electronics taking shape, it's time the legs do as well. So Mike is heading over to Finish Line Composites for a meeting with the doctor, Dr. Carbon Fiber. Kim's has done it all with carbon fiber, and somewhere along the line, he got the name Dr. Carbon Fiber. Hey, what's going on, Mike? Hey, James. Good. How's it going? Yeah, going good. Cool. cool. Beautiful cool. day for making, oh my, that's a lot of carbon fiber. Yes, it is. Armed with enough boxed up carbon fiber to build a small spaceship, the guys launch into the job. Building the perfect leg is a long and tedious process. 
The first step is to cut the carbon fiber into carefully measured pieces, which get puzzled together in the shape of a square. This is just one layer. And to support up to 400 pounds of robot, Mike will need 149 more layers that will get stacked, baked, and pressurized 